Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome past director of the USA Freedom Corps and former domestic policy advisor to President George W. Bush, John Bridgeland. Good evening. Could I see a show of hands of the 9-11 families? Most of you. I want to begin tonight by thanking the 9-11 families for your courage and perseverance. It was the strength of the 9-11 families that sustained me as we worked from the bunker below the White House on 9-11 at the Federal Emergency Management Agency that same day and in the weeks and months after 9-11 from the Situation Room. I thought of you every day because my wife and daughter Kaylee, who was three at the time, was in the World Trade Center in 1993 on the day that the bomb went off. Their lives were spared, but I remembered you every single day in our work. You were and are a tremendous source of strength for our nation, and you helped make our country better and safer. We mark this day principally remembering those who we lost on that day. But 9-11 also prompted a sea change in our country, and it was organic. The organic response of Americans was to help one another and to step forward to serve one another. To build upon what's been called the gathering momentum of millions of acts of kindness and decency we undertook after 9-11 efforts, working with many of the 9-11 families, to foster what Ronald Reagan called that volunteer spirit that flows like a deep and mighty river through the history of our nation. One year ago today, as Rick Stengel mentioned, two presidential hopeful senators, John McCain and Barack Obama, stood down on the campaign and joined hands around one issue that uniquely defines us as Americans, the Serve American Act. And that Serve America Act would eventually include the day we celebrate today, a day of both remembrance and service. Two leaders in the Congress also reached across what too often seems like an impenetrable line between Democrats and Republicans to envision and pass comprehensive legislation that will literally provide millions of Americans, young and old, returning veterans, those who want to teach in schools, those who want to help the poor, those who want to help to uh, protect our environment and to better serve their neighbor and nation. One of those leaders in Congress, Senator Orrin Hatch, who come to know very well, lives and breathes public service, first as a Mormon missionary working in the Great Lakes, and then for more than 30 years as a U.S. Senator. After 9-11, he was the first Senator to call me in my post as Director of Domestic Policy and ask the President to issue a call to service. Senator Hatch saw the power of tapping volunteers, mobilizing faith-based institutions, and engaging all Americans in a culture of service, citizenship, and responsibility. To his left was a wonderful public servant who I grew up admiring as a young person, Senator Edward Kennedy. While much has been said about him in the last two weeks, I'd actually like to tell a personal story. After the bill was passed by the Senate and clearly headed to the President for his signature, I was driving through rural Kentucky, and my cell phone rang. I didn't recognize the number, so I was tempted not to pick it up, but luckily I did. It was a ringing and booming voice. He said, John, it's Ted Kennedy. I can't thank you enough and the Service Nation Coalition for your help. Remember when my brother talked about passing a torch to a new generation? Well, we've really blowtorched this thing, haven't we? And he laughed and laughed as a man who had done so much in his life that he no longer feared death. So I'd like to echo his words tonight by thanking the Service Nation Coalition, including Times Rick Stengel, who uh, boldly wrote three cover stories on the issue of service connected to 9-11, because that was part of the organic response from the 9-11 families and those around the country who grew uh, around them to support them. Uh, the transformational leader, Alan Casey of Be the Change, who single-handedly, working together with many of you in this room, worked so hard to build a coalition of literally thousands of people across America to build this culture and, uh, of service and citizenship. City Years inspirational Michael Brown and Ann Mora Conley, 
and all the city year red jackets. You know, Ted Kennedy in his last days, we saw pictures on the cover of the New York Times with city year and Ted. So he clearly, clearly felt the power of service and the hundreds of others who helped translate the dream of President Kennedy and Senator Edward Kennedy into reality. Bowling Alone author Robert Putnam has said that once or twice a century, we have the opportunity to foster, foster a kind of civic renewal that doesn't come again. Well, that was the organic response from 9-11, driven by many of you. And we had volunteer service not only soar just after 9-11, but for years and years uh, to this day. And now with the passage of the Serve America Act, millions of Americans will have new opportunities to serve their neighbors and nation. This is your legacy for the 9-11 families and those whose service and sacrifice supported them, strengthened our communities, and continue to transform our nation.